joining us now in the studio, is the hardest working man in telly. He's travel expert Simon Calder, and he's going to give his analysis as to what's going on. Uh, with, let's start with border force strikes, shall we, Simon? Yes. That seems to be the biggest story of the day so far. What's going on? Well, I think we are going to see roughly a replay of what we saw last Friday, if anybody can remember that far back to the 23rd of December. Um, I was at Gatwick Airport from very first thing, expecting to talk to passengers who'd be getting off planes and say, oh, I spent two hours queuing up. That was what we were warned by EasyJet, the mm -hmm. biggest airline at Gatwick. And uh, Manchester Airport had said there was going to be disruption. Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, said, maybe you want to rethink your plans in a horrible echo of all the COVID warnings we had. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, by mid-afternoon... About 100 people I talked to had just said, no, it's fine, whether they come through with their families, so they had to um, uh, go through the proper passport control, or whether they'd been able to use the e-gates. No problems there, no problems at Heathrow, no problems at Manchester. Those are the three biggest airports in the UK. There's going to be action there again today, and also at Birmingham, at Glasgow, and at Cardiff airports. I'm not expecting to um, hop onto a train, if I can find one running, and get to uh, Gatwick to find out what's happening, because my view is... we. We will probably see similar sort of thing. It was so interesting you were talking earlier about whether people were waved through. Yeah. Now, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I was, I was land side, not air side. Mm. But my understanding is that all they were doing, were they were just checking, you know, is this Ellie's passport? Is that Ellie? Yes. And that's all they, they were doing. And that's effectively all they needed to do. Any special cases of, you know, do, uh, do, you know does Martin have the right to um, uh, remain here? There were actual UK border force management. So things seemed to go pretty quickly. Um, and it did actually uh, raise, raise the uh, question. And uh, Michael O'Leary, boss of uh, Ryanair, said, why don't you just wave people through? Of course, a million of us who used to travel across from Dover to Calais um, were used to the idea that French would sort of just see the cover of your passport and off you go. So, mm. so Simon, uh, just got to say, first of all, I hardly recognise you without your high biz vest on. <laughs> <laughs> your signature um, outfit, as it were. Does this um, fact that basically there's no difference, border force aren't even being missed, does that weaken their bargaining position in terms of their pay deal, do you think? Uh, look, um, I'm, I'm you know, obviously agnostic about the strike. I can absolutely see that 2% when you are looking at inflation of, of 10% more than that, is um, a pretty thin offer. Um, but I fear that the um, PCS union has, you know, of all the strikes I've covered, this has to be the least effective. And I've covered some pretty ineffective strikes in my time. And of course, at the moment, we've got all sorts of very effective strikes going on. And we even had, if you remember as far back as October, um, the strike that never was on the railways, the uh, RMT union called it off with a few hours to go, still absolutely wrecked. Millions of travel plans for yes. the week. Well, let's talk about rail now, yeah. shall we? Because there's a bit of confusion going on. We were talking about it um, mm. outside um, in the studio a little bit earlier. Even on non-strike days, there appears to be massive amounts of disruption. So what's going on, on on the rails, Simon? Well, we had the kind of usual just after Christmas disruption yesterday. It was a pretty big scale. I was at yes. Paddington Station in central London um, where the first trains, because the strike finished at 6 o'clock in the morning, the first train to run anywhere was uh, supposed to be the 753 Sheffield to Plymouth. That didn't run because of a separate strike by members of the TSSA. Union. Then the first train from Edinburgh to Glasgow, which is then going to be the first one, uh, that was cancelled because of signal failure. And finally, at five past eight, we got a, a service actually running. Unfortunately, it was a rail replacement bus from oh. Manchester Piccadilly to Manchester Airport. Meanwhile, at Paddington, the hub for South Wales and the west of England, um, OK, first train out to Cardiff and Swansea at 9.18. Hundreds of people had done exactly the right thing. They checked in advance everything. They, they were there for the train. It didn't go. Mm. Neither did the half past nine. Neither did any train for, um, well, till nearly 11 o'clock, by which time there were thousands of passengers yeah. there. And this was all due, um, and, and some people were laughing about this, I certainly wasn't, all due to North Pole Depot, 
which is a couple of miles outside the station where the trains are kept overnight, being blocked by overrunning engineering works. So we had the usual start-up chaos. There was also problems in Edinburgh getting trains for the Lumo run to um, uh, London. So all sorts of problems. But on top of that, we've got these layers of strikes coming up as well. OK, Simon, there's tons to talk about. I came back from Newark yesterday on the London North Eastern Railway. It was superb. The staff were really, really helpful. Great service. Quickly today, um, there's a story on the front page of Daily Mail, Lynch softening his stance. Is that because, again, people largely got by, they got around this strike? Do you think Mick needs to soften his stance because the public will is going against these strikes now, Simon? Well, we got this odd little message coming from the RMT union on Christmas Eve saying, mm. where's the ministers? We want to talk to them. I think there is the sense that uh, talking to individual railway men and women, uh, those in the front line doing fantastic work, they're exhausted. Mm. They have yeah. lost hundreds, sometimes thousands of pounds. And, well, the whole idea of the unions, and this goes for the RMT, for ASLEF, the train drivers' union, for the TSSA, who, by the way, are knocking out all trains today on West Midlands trains and London North Western Railway. Um, the idea is this is an essential industry. Trouble is, the travelling public is sort of saying, no, you're not. Yeah. And that is eroding their, their, their strength. And I think we will... After the next round of massive strikes starts in six days' time, lasts for effectively a week, we will, um, we will see some kind of settlement. Because there are some headlines this morning suggesting, as we, as we said in our introduction there, that there could be another five months of rail strikes. Yep. You're, you're more positive than... Well, I, I, honestly, I, I mean, attrition is where we are, are at at the moment, and I don't see that there is an appetite for just uh, you know, a kind of 80s-style strike going on for months among railway men and women. And every day that this happens, um, people find an alternative way to travel than going by train, and the railways get into an even worse state than they are at the moment in terms of being a business. Yeah, well, we're British, aren't we? We keep calm, carry on. That's what we do. We make do amend. Thank you, Simon. Really good to have you with us in the studio.